What lessons should the EU learn from the other countries that have had experiences with the downsides of overregulation? Rigs Europe hosted a panel discussion in Brussels featuring voices from different politicians, analysts and economists from different EU nations about how the EU should tackle the growing problem of black markets and the resulting criminality. It's a, a report on lessons learned from the pandemic. For me, it was like a kind of, uh, I mean, it was amazing because it was like working in a lab. Because of the pandemic, there were two countries that, do, that did some things very wrong, uh, and I can't say it because here we're in Europe, and these countries are South Africa and Panama. I mean, it's published, and we have gone to those countries, and we had said this. So I'm comfortable with repeating this. Uh, it was agreed by them, of course, when the pandemic started. Nobody knew what was going on. It was quite difficult. But uh, one particular measure that these countries took was uh, restricted policies in everything that has to do with excise. And Panama was a country that was doing great in curbing illicit trade in alcohol products. But because of this idea, uh, it was a kind of measure to support the, the lockdowns. I mean, so people, they wouldn't mingle. Uh, they put forward some policies that related to uh, restricting the consumption of these products, such as your size. It was tobacco and alcohol, and ever since, criminal gangs, what they did with that was creating a fertile, fertile ground for them to, uh, I mean, to have illicit trade because consumers, they wanted to consume those products. And we lost part of the market, of the legal market, and now it's in the shadow economy and we're losing tax and all the things that here the other panelists mentioned. But the lesson learned from that is that this is a problem that we need to tackle from all angles, and this includes law enforcement, it includes having the smart financial measures, rationalizing taxes, and also for me one of the most important takeaways is the importance of public-private cooperation. I mean, I've been in the environment of IGOs for more than 10 years now, and this is mentioned a lot, but now we're getting to a point where we have to do it, and it's naturally happening where we have, for instance, tech companies with smart solutions to tackle problems that otherwise it would be impossible. We need the private sector to, for instance, to, to control things like small parcels or to know the indicators to understand how uh, the illicit trade is growing. Um, and I think uh, it's good to raise awareness about this and I welcome the event that you put forward today. Thank you very much. So all the data is showing uh, that the illicit trade is uh, continuously growing. Uh, and with all of your answers, I think we can agree that uh, this is uh, having an effect on the EU competitiveness. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, that takes me to the next question that I would like you all to answer. And that is what you think <clears throat> of when it comes to uh, how the European Union can address uh, this slower productivity growth, uh, for example, compared to the United States, uh, to cl and close the gap in uh, GDP uh, per capita, uh, uh, real disposable income since 2000, uh, and also what we think. Uh, what what role role do you think the EU policies and treaties? Uh, have in uh, incentivizing uh, the descendants of illicit products. What can EU, uh, what, what have EU done uh, and what can we do? Uh, we can start with you we can, and go the other way. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the black markets are still growing. Uh, okay. and yeah, that was not a smart move to want to. <laughs> <laughs> It's a difficult question, but what has the European Union done? Well, I think that's something that is well done by the European Union, by Europol. You were just showing the SOPTA reports. They are super accurate. I mean, one of the reasons there are many studies in the European Union is because there is available data, and that's important, and it's reliable in general. I mean, law enforcement, uh, European law enforcement agencies, they show what they do, and it's easier to have indicators 
Now, yes, I think I partially answered the question on how the European Union should tackle this problem. For sure, taking the law enforcement aspect is important. Cooperation here, they mentioned it. Also, customs, controls, that's the way, those are the job points where we, where we need to put emphasis. But that needs to come together with uh, wise financial policies. Uh, and it's important to see what happens and what happens in other countries. Thank so, you. Yeah. And Magdalena Joshkowska, what do you think about EU's control and regulation? Has it a part in the rising black markets? Uh, yes, it's, um, I, I will repeat uh, uh, what, 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 I, what I said, because regulation is uh, uh, one part, and I will, I will go back to this, <coughs> but um, what is really very, very important in tackling uh, this problem of uh, illicit products either coming to Europe or being produced in Europe but distributed also with the modern innovative ways like uh, internet platforms, uh, e-digital digital, uh, trade. So it's, it's, it's uh, very important to find a proper way uh, to uh, efficiently uh, control uh, and to have an eff efficiently um, functioning uh, uh, forces, services, uh, and coordinated in a coordinated way. So Europe has mentioned, so it is very important that the cooperation uh, between the EU countries, between the EU um, authorities was there, and uh, exchange of information, exchange of um, uh, experience also, it is very important. Because you, have, you can have the best law ever, but if you do not implement it correctly, and uh, if you don't execute the law properly, then it will not work. And we can observe this on many, many, I think, aspects and policies in Europe, that the law is there, but it's, uh, we have problems because it is not uh, properly executed, and this creates for businesses an unequal level playing field, so un uncompetitiveness. And um, uh, as far as the legislation is concerned, it is of course uh, very important that um, uh, EU legislators, so the EU Co European Commission, and uh, follow maybe and try to try also to learn from the past and from the history of member states what what the member states were doing. And, especially maybe as uh, tobacco products are concerned and excise duties. So it is important to follow the good patterns and the good experience uh, and to have a dialogue with business because it's, uh, and to analyze before you introduce new, new law, you need to try and to learn what and predict what can be the impact. Because not to, to not to every product, not to every good, you can follow the same <laughs> the same pattern as, as to as to others. And uh, coming to the tobacco products and tobacco tobacco market, what we did in Poland was to introduce uh, within our strategy also a strategy towards the taxation. So to have a um, social kind of a social agreement contract with the business, with the, with the market, uh, on the way uh, how the taxes will be increased. So there, there was a map, a roadmap created and accepted. Uh, and uh, it wasn't very easy to agree on the content of the map and on the way forward, but it was worth to do this because this stabilized market, this gives um, for, for the companies, SMEs, big companies, big corporations, uh, a, a, a trustful way that, that they know how, uh, when the taxes will be increased, how much they will be increased, so they can plan on their business strategies, on their investments, on their uh, pricing. Uh, and the consumers are also more secure because they know that there will not, will not be uh, uh, high rise prices you know, unexpectedly uh, happen. So it helped, uh, but also, of course, there are many, many, many uh, there are other aspects uh, uh, which also ha have to be taken into account. Why, account and I why, think, uh, we're, uh, ah, sorry okay. to interrupt you, we will yeah. take those other okay. aspects later on, and we're also going to talk more about Poland's uh, okay. fiscal roadmap. Uh, Thank you. Uh,